Hello, good people of the internet. I have returned with another video. Uh, this video will be probably fairly short. Uh, I think I got my setup right. Uh, probably will be maybe like 10 minutes, so thank you for stopping by and uh, I'm going to show a few things. I got two packages in the mail today. Oh, it feels good to see it say that. Um, got one from Uncle Bo and Steve. I don't remember. Steve, I'm not sure what your handle is. Uh, I've been out of this YouTube thing for far too long. But anyhow, thank you, Bo and Steve, um, both with a little, both generous gifts. So uh, let me show you real quick what I got. So first one from Steve said every Grateful Dead fan should have these or they should go to a true Grateful Dead fan, I guess. So um, Steve, I actually have this, but my copy from, you know, this is from 1995, the People magazine. Uh, it was released September, October of 95 after Jerry Garcia passed away. Um, I, my aunt got me this along with um, skeletons from the closet right around my birthday. And uh, I just pretty much just, you know, poured over this magazine and just, uh, you know, went through and uh, you, you just would read all this, you know, it was, it was definitely a, you know, it's like a high level overview. Uh, you know, the things that are in here now are, you know, very well common knowledge and things like that. But, uh, you know, at the time, it's uh, it's really a time capsule. Like, it's just, you know, there's these online websites that it talks about. And, you know, all this sort of brings back memories. And I, I have, um, when we moved, you know, sort of unloading all of my stuff, I sort of have like this bin of just, uh, you know, the paper ephemera things. And, uh, you know, my copy was in here again, like no, no, the cover was all ripped off because I'm just sitting and read this. And, you know, when you're kind of, you know, at, at a younger age or, you know, like when I was, um, you know, the sort of, you didn't have the internet, you sort of just read magazines and read books and things like that. So, um, I mean, we had the internet, but it wasn't like, you know, we had America online, we could only use, you know, a couple hours per month. Uh, this this is just, I've been sort of laughing at this. This is great. You know, the BMG 10 CDs for a penny. Just had to buy one. Um, so, of course, this is uh, this is fantastic. You know, days of yore. And they even have the, you know, the, the in tribute to Jerry Garcia spotlighting the skeletons from the closet album there with the artwork, which I would say the majority of the people who got... Uh, Skeletons from the Closet on CD, got it from a BMG, you know, one of these free ones. So uh, it's really interesting to see like what's in print, you know, so there's Live Dead, Working Man's Dead, American Beauty, Europe 72, Terrapin Station, The Best of the Grateful Dead, What a Long Strange Trip It's Been, uh, Shakedown Street, Go to Heaven, Reckoning, Dead Set, In the Dark, Built to Last, Without a Net, uh, and the Jerry Garcia Band. So, you know, BMG may have had all the other ones, but the ones that they sort of spotlight in here, um, you know, they don't uh, have those, those super early albums that uh, I guess were for fans only, but uh, thank you for this. And he also uh, gave me two copies of, this is the, um, um, this is the Grateful Dead Almanac, which, uh, man, I'll tell you what, this is, there's some interesting stuff on this. And this is all, um, um, you know, this is all in line now. Well, I mean, like now, if you get the Grateful Dead Almanac, you go to Dead Not Net and they have a, you know, the digital thing. Um, I think what's really crazy is, um, so of course, you know, that Jerry Garcia died July of, um, I'm sorry, he didn't die in July of 99, he died in August of uh, 1995. So this one actually has, you know, here's the last show that they did on that summer tour. This is from, Chicago, July 9th, 1995. And this would have been the one that came directly after, which has, this will blow your mind, fall tour 1995, which never happened uh, because of course Jerry was dead. So, um, you know, and there's still tickets that exist. If you go on eBay, I think you can find some of the tickets that were actually sent out for these shows. So um, thank you, Steve. This is definitely something that's very cool and very, very sweet to have, so thank you for that. Um, so second, uh, from Uncle Bo. Um, <laughs> Bo is like fine stuff, and he's always like, hey, do you need this, or whatever, and it's like, you know, it's stuff that I already have, so he always says it's like very hard to hit my my list, um, you know, these psychedelic albums that I've checked off the list a long time ago. But um, 
Uh, this one is sort of just like my last video, sort of talking about the privately pressed sort of folk country bluegrass kind of thing. You know, a lot of this is sort of what I've been listening to these days. Um, this is Rural Delivery, RD Breakdown, which um, it was recorded in uh, Port Orchard, Washington, the Pacific Northwest, if you will. Um, and in the bottom it says here, like, presented to J-A-N- NI, April 23rd, 1988, Port Orchard Rust Bust Day. So whatever that is. Um, but this is really cool. You know, I put this on and I was listening to the first side. And I didn't look at the liner notes or anything like that or what songs were on here. Uh, and then when I flipped it on side two, it's, you know, this, I start hearing this song and I'm like, man, like they are totally ripping off Friend of the Devil here. And then sure enough, track two was actually friend of the devil so th this is that fun stuff that exists um you know uh, somebody goes and you know they see this in a bin somewhere and it's hey it's not pink floyd it's not led zeppelin and they just they'll pass right over top of it so uh definitely a fun thing to pick up so thank you both for this um and then the second thing that he sent and you know i was trying to think of like okay so you know th there's some records that like I may never talk about that I have, and I figured this was sort of a you know as good of a time as any to talk about this. But uh, so Bo sent me music of the carousel. It's on Folkways, um, and if you know, you know, as Folkways is sort of uh, you know they had Pete Seeger and Woody Guthrie and Lead Belly, and um, but there was a lot of sort of you know sounds of of the world, I guess you could say, or you know the just sort of documents of you know things that exist and um you know definitely got obsessed with folkways i still am um so you know it's it's like one of those things that you like uh, maybe will eventually have a complete set of folkways records um that's a long-term goal you know what i mean like not i'm not going on discogs and you know paying 40 dollars for the you know sunny terry and brownie mcgee records and stuff like that um but there's just, there's great stuff on here. I mean, it's like, you know, the sound recordings of, um, where's my book at here? So I have, if, if you like Folkways records or you don't know anything about Folkways records, um, I can thank Blake Wirtz, DB, don't remember what the number is, um, for turning me onto this. It's Worlds of Sound. It's a great book. It's all about Folkways. Um, you know, there's just pages and pages of good stuff. Um, you know, the anthology of American folk music, I'm sure you've heard about me, you know, say that thousands of times on this channel if you've been following for a while. The index is great. Um, you know, they will pretty much have a full discography of everything that they have, you know, great pictures and things and, um, uh, you know, basically, you know, talk about Mose Ash and things like that. So this is, uh, this is, you know, here's the anthology of American folk music part, but, um, you know, I, I was really, I still am really obsessed with folkways and just sound collages and things. And um, I, I, at one point I was like really obsessed with like just recorded music and, and field recordings and, you know, reading things that like Alan Lomax did. And, um, but I had, I had a, you know, a little recorder, digital recorder, and I would just kind of take it and record concerts. And uh, uh, one time I, during my, uh, where, where my job is at, we're like really close to the, um, the Pittsburgh Pirates baseball stadium. So uh, one day I had tickets and just uh, took a half day and walked over to the stadium. And um, we, I, I was just by myself. I caught a game by myself and, you know, got a beer and nachos. And I recorded the whole entire game uh, on uh, a little digital recorder. It was like an afternoon game. And uh, it's really just great to like listen to it. I know this is probably sounding very weird, but it's like, you know, like three hours of just, you know, the announcements and the songs that they're playing and you can hear the bat and, you know, just the ambient, um, you know, kind of the, it wasn't like a big, it was a, you know, a day game. I think it was like a makeup from a rain out. Um, so there wasn't that many people there. They had a double header that day. So, um, but it's just, you know, those things like that, you know, they just sort of captivate me. And, you know, I'm, uh, Sam was saying the other day, like I have too many projects, like I have too many things that I like want to do and whatever, but, um, you know, the sound recordings are always something that has intrigued me. And Finn Folkways have sort of filled that void into that thing that exists. Um, but I did want, to, did want to take advantage of showing this. So Music of the Carousel, like everybody, like I can just feel people like unsubscribing right now. But um, 
you know, it, this is one thing. So I, I mentioned about buying records at the thrift store and you sort of have to have rules and you have to, uh, especially like if you're like, I'm going to collect everything from a certain record label or I'm going to, you know, get all of these different records or this one particular artist. Like it's always great. You always need to have rules and you have to have sort of regulations you have to set for yourself or else um, next thing you know, you're going to be on this cogs and you've just spent $500 buying all these records so that you could easily um, maybe just slowly trickle them into the collection. So um, I have a couple of things that I have rules that I do. So um, there's four records that I, that I, that I basically will um, uh, always buy in the thrift store. So I always will buy privately pressed stuff. Um, it doesn't matter if it's sort of like, you know, uh, Christian music. Sometimes you find stuff that are um, these artists. I can show some of the, I'll, I'll show some more in an upcoming video that I have, but um, there's a lot of stuff that's sort of these, you know, musicians that may be singing traditional hymns and things like that, but there may be some secular music that they sort of slip in and uh, you find these, these really, these really great, um, you know, things that are just floating around out there that people skipped over because, hey, it's not, it's not Pink Floyd and this isn't The Doors and this isn't, uh, you know, Led Zeppelin and, and the Rolling Stones or the Beatles or anything like that. So people skip over these records and they think that they're not valuable in any way, but they are, you know, this, they're um, things that may not exist anymore. And this may be the only recording that they have of them. So there's those records, uh, always buy the folk records, always buy the Christian sort of privately pressed kind of stuff. If it's a label I haven't heard of, I'll probably buy it. Um, also too, I will, and then again, the only, I will only pay a dollar. That's the other thing. I will only pay a dollar. If I pay anything more than a dollar, then I'll pass it off. Um, I always buy Deutsche Grammophon. If you find a Deutsche Grammophon record for a dollar, I will buy it. Cause this is sort of, you know, some of the best classical recordings that you can find, um, recorded on the best equipment that Germany had to offer. You know what I mean? Um, up until about like 1980 something. And then they went digital. You can always tell cause there's like a little thing in the side that will say digital. So I don't buy those ones, but uh, if it's an analog recording of that, it's like, you know, this is, this is it. This is the sort of the pinnacle of um, classical music is things like that. So I just had this one sitting around. Uh, the other one that I get is none such. So if, if you ever, and I'm sure you guys have seen these all the time, you know, so none such was owned by Jack Holtzman. It was sort of his, uh, way to kind of undercut the um, classical, um, the way the classical music was being distributed. His records were always either like a dollar cheaper, I believe, or two dollars. I forget what it was, but um, most of these are sort of chamber music. So if you're not big on classical music, chamber music is like when it's a smaller, maybe like uh, a small group of instruments, maybe like five, maybe a quartet, quintet, something like that. Um, Whereas the Deutsche Grammophons are, are usually a large orchestra, symphony orchestra. So, um, yeah, so I always will buy these for a dollar. Of course, there's your, there's your Goodwill sticker there. So um, I almost have a complete set of these, which is fun. And uh, so sort of, you know, a connection to bows. The reason why I was showing this is um, the other thing that I always buy if I see these, right? Um, and there's a lot. There's a lot that exist. And... Um, I, you know, I've kind of done some research about this, but uh, so there was this guy, his name was uh, Paul Eakins, and he lived in a, uh, somewhere in Missouri, and uh, he kind of had this little tourist trap. He was a plumber, uh, but the thing was he uh, sort of, you know, like as, as our fathers and grandfathers um, basically did in, in America, you always sort of had to have a hobby and you tinkered with things and you fixed things or you had a garden or whatever the case may be. Um, so Paul was a plumber, but, uh, he was really good at fixing, um, so basically like these, like pipe organs, like Wurlitzers and calliopes and things like that. So this is, this is sort of a picture of what it was. You can see it's just sort of like a tourist trap where, you know, they would have, there's was like an Indian trading post and, uh, and there was like the, you know, the, uh, the arcade as you would, or the Nickelodeon. And uh, so anytime I see these for a dollar, I will buy these. So um, I, I don't know if this is him or not. I think it might be, but uh, yeah, that was, that was his thing. So like he sort of did this and uh, he sort of restored all of these, um, these instruments that were like lost to obscurity. You know, this is the mid sixties, early sixties. This one came out in 62, uh, but they do have a website and you can still get these like on CD, I guess. And there's, you know, like, hundreds of volumes of these like I, th I think there's at least like 25 cds that are maybe still in print 
Um, but again, it's, you know, if it's if it's uh, a dollar, I will buy these. So uh, I have just to show you a few that I have. This is the wonderful Belgian band organ. Um, here's more from the gay '90s village. You can see sort of some of the instruments that he has. But it's sort of all this, you know, like this stuff you hear on the carousel. And can you can you feel the subscribers unsubscribing? Um, Christmas music box. I, I, I did pay a dollar ninety nine for this because I think this was the only time I've ever seen this. So some of those other ones I've seen time and time again. So um, my Christmas, I think maybe I have like ten Christmas albums. So I always like to have a few. This was the first Christmas that I sort of had my Christmas music, and it wasn't like I didn't remember like two days before and had to dig them out, and they were in a box, or whatever. So um, nickel music. This is some great, you know, Americana sort of folk, folk sort of thing, folk art, folk whatever, folk. I think this is the first one I had was the Circus Calliope. That was sort of intriguing to me. Like I just wanted to kind of have some Calliope music. So of course this is from the the Goodwill sticker there. This one's from the New York World's Fair. Um, I'm talking about the gay 90s village there. And the big top circus calliope. Descriptive liner notes. And then of course the merry-go-round and circus calliope music. Leon Berry, the giant Wurlitzer organ volume five. So again, this is sort of my, I wouldn't say my plea, but uh, sort of just there's interesting music out there to be had. Just go out and discover it and enjoy it. Um, so there's some interesting stuff coming on if you're in the United States. Um, of course, on April 20th is the Grateful Dead meetup at the movies. They're going to play the um, Grateful Dead movie and sort of talk about the Cornell. Uh, there's, you know, the release that's going to be coming out in May, Cornell show, which is like the quintessential Grateful Dead show. Um, and then also uh, this Saturday is uh, Record Store Day, which, um, you know, call me an old man or whatever, but I'm not really too, like, <laughs> like, I think I'm going to just stick to eBay. Like, I talked to Jerry, and uh, Jerry's like, you know, I'm not going to stand and do that. And um, I don't know, this will probably be the first year in a while that I've, you know, sat out where, you know, like on the second or third Record Store Day, I remember I could just, you could go at like, two o'clock in the afternoon on a set, you know, whenever it was on Saturday, first Saturday or third Saturday in April, whatever it is, um, and still get everything that you want. So I'm, uh, I probably will just kind of stick to eBay this year. Um, but, uh, if you're going out there, enjoy it. If I don't talk to you before that. So, um, uh, but thanks for stopping by and, uh, we'll see you on down the trail.